Now there are a few ways we could draw the interior passageways and chambers of the Great Pyramid. We could find detailed information about where, how far up the side it starts, and what angle it moves down, and how many feet. And that would be very accurate and precise, but it would also be very difficult and take a while to do that. There's a shortcut we can use. Because there are hand-drawn illustrations and two-dimensional illustrations of that side view, we can use those as an overlay to help us trace what other people have already done for us. So we're going to use that shortcut for this model. Um, you can find those detailed diagrams online by searching for Khufu Pyramid Diagram or um, you know, Great Pyramid Interior. But I've already provided some of those in my live binders. So if you go to Google and do a search for Gedenius Live Binders, you'll be able to find these resources I've provided for people. These uh, these links that pop up show you my public shelf that's available. It looks like they also have one of my binders featured on their featured binders page. It's the Ancient Egypt one I'm about to show you. But if you go to my shelf, you can find a lot more resources for other subjects as well. And we're going to click on the Ancient Egypt live binder shelf. And this has all these different tabs for different topics. We're going to go to the Architects, Stonemasons, and Buildings topic. And you'll see right on our main page an example of a diagram showing the interior of the Great Pyramid of Khufu in Giza. So one thing you want to do first is right click on that, save your image, and give it a logical name. In this case I saved it as Pyramid Interior. Okay, so we could call it Great Pyramid, Diagram, or whatever makes sense to you. You're going to need to save that to use it in your SketchUp model. Next step, we also want to open this Nova Explore Ancient Egypt resource. This is a great an interesting tool with an interactive feature where you can click this launch interactive it takes you to a map of Egypt and you can explore temples and pyramids at Luxor and Giza so if I go to Giza here it will zoom in to this bird's eye sort of satellite view of the layout with multiple pyramids um, the Sphinx temple some of these are photos and some of them are virtual tours so we're going to do a virtual tour of the inside of the pyramid of Khufu it gives you information about where you're located and it shows you a little map down here similar to our diagram that we just downloaded so that you can find the length, the width, the height of each location and what it was used for. Then you can close that information box. You can actually have a little 3D tour and look around. You can change location by clicking on the little targets here to move up or down. Here's a passage descending down into the subterranean chamber or you can move up into the Great Gallery, the Grand Gallery. Um, and you can get information with the information box up here. So we're going to leave this open to be used as we need it for our width and height of the different rooms, for example. So we can really be more precise than our illustration. But we're going to start with our illustration here. So back here we're going to do File, Import. And we're going to import that picture into our model. Now it might say something like 3DS files down here or SketchUp files and that's only going to show you the type of file that's listed down there. So since we want JPEG images we want to go down here to JPEG image and then we can choose our diagram image and choose open. We're going to snap that for now to the corner of this model and just scale it up about the size we want but we're going to need to do some some finagling here, some fixing of it. Now when I orbit around to the back side, you can see it in reverse from the back. And we want this triangular part, the pyramid part, to match the triangular face of the pyramid we just made. So to do that, we're going to use the S key to scale it from the corners, just like before, but it's just scaling two-dimensional now, and the M tool to move it around. This is the move tool right here, the little crosshairs. So we want this straight line to line up with the bottom of the pyramid. So as of right now, it's a little bit too big, perhaps. So I need to, if I move it up, let's move it up. See, if I move it so that the bottom line is lined up, the pyramid's a little bit too large, it looks like. So I need to scale it just a little bit down. There's another tool we're going to use to help us do this as well and to help us trace through it. And I'm going to show you from the other side. Another tool we can use to make this sort of transparent and make it be able to be easily moved into place and traced is to right click on it and choose hide. And that will make it disappear at first. But if you go to your view, panel you can choose to show hidden geometry and then you can see things that are hidden but it sort of gives it this see-through transparent effect so we can still scale this and work with it since we're showing hidden geometry we can press the M tool to move it and you can see the black lines of the borders this way fairly easily there's one more important thing we need to do here and that is that we don't have an underground area for this descending passage and subterranean chamber right now. If we go look around to the back, we only have the pyramid area. Well, this is a pretty simple problem to solve. You just take the rectangle tool, go to a corner of the pyramid along this 
surface here and draw the area you need down to the bottom. And then we can push pull that out. At the very minimum, you'd want it to extend all the way out to the edges of the pyramid. But that makes it look like it's all one solid building. So to really make it clear that this is a ground plane that the pyramid is sitting on, I'm going to extend it past the base of the pyramid like this. Just a little bit since I plan on printing this out on a 3D printer and I don't want to use too much material or too much space. So now we have our ground plane that we can then put our subterranean chamber and passages into. And that's what we're going to do in the next step. We're going to add our chambers and passages.